Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex and the other day I was doing some straightening up around here and I stumbled across my very first Plex server which was this Sony Vio laptop that I got in for review way back in 2013 or so and it eventually became my mainline media server. This was running Windows 7 with the Windows Media Center uh, server built into it. I was using this with my HD home runs before they had their own software. And as you can see, it actually still works. I plugged it in after many years sitting on a shelf and it just kind of booted right up again. And I thought what I might do in this video is talk to you about all the Plex servers I have used over the years and why I upgraded from one to the other. Because I know many of you are always looking to upgrade or play around with some new home server that you may want to install. And many times we end up looking for used hardware, but sometimes that used hardware might be really good at running the server software, but not so great at video transcoding, for example. So what I think I'll do in this video is talk to you about each step along the way with my journey here. I've only had about three or four servers and why I upgraded each time because the server was running fine, but there were things involving video transcoding that I did want to see better results with. And so we'll start with this laptop here and work our way up to my current setup. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they're not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see what my Plex server journey was looking like back when it started. Now, the reason why I went with this laptop as my media server is because it has an Intel processor inside and of course it was available and I wasn't using it for anything else at the time. One thing that I've come to appreciate on this laptop having looked at it again after so many years is that it's got a ton of ports on it. Built-in ethernet, two USBs, a microphone in and, and a headphone out, very easily accessed upgrade paths for the storage and the RAM. You can even swap the battery out and to my surprise I didn't have a spicy battery here either so this thing is held up uh, quite well. It still looks pretty good too, as you can see. Now, the reason why the Intel processor I mentioned was so important for making this my Plex server is because Plex really likes Intel QuickSync technology for hardware transcoding. You can use an NVIDIA GPU for this as well, but of course that's much more expensive and consumes a lot more power. But Intel can pack quite a bit in to a very affordable and power efficient package. And of course, a laptop, at least at the time, was a great choice for that. And if we look back here on the Plex support pages, this is their hardware accelerated streaming support page, which I'll link to in the video description. You can see that this support goes back a long way. You could have an Intel chip from 2011 and still get some degree of hardware transcoding. But of course, technologies change over time. We've got a lot more video encoding technology now than we did in 2011. And so the capabilities have evolved over time in future iterations of Intel processors. So for example, this one is a 2013 vintage processor. It's an i7-3770. Uh, and if you do a Google search on the chip that you're going to be using for your Plex server or hope to use, uh, what you'll often see is the code name and what product family it's in. So this laptop is running with an Ivy Bridge processor. And there's a great uh, little page on the Wikipedia encyclopedia that lists out all of the QuickSync capabilities of different generations of Intel hardware. So if we take a look here at the Ivy Bridge column, what you'll see is that we can do AVC or H.264 without any real issue here. We can decode it and encode it on hardware, but we can only decode VC1 video we have no chance of doing HEVC hardware transcoding. So there are things that uh, we want to do maybe that this laptop wasn't capable of. And so as I started getting into more HEVC video on my Plex server, I needed something different because I wasn't able to hardware transcode on this and it was resorting to software transcoding, which of course was taxing the server more significantly. And when I had a couple of people watching things at once, it was bogging down so badly that not everybody could make use of the server. So it was time for an upgrade. So in 2017, we retired that laptop and moved over to a WD MyCloud network attached storage device. This is the PR2100. And this came in free of charge from WD back then in full disclosure. And this has an Intel processor inside an N3710. And if we take a look at the Intel website for that, 
you can see that it was in the Braswell family. So if we jump over to our chart here and look at Braswell, which is right here, you can see that it supports more than what we had on the other chip. So while it can't encode VC1, it can decode it. And that's important because Plex hardware transcoding involves decoding video, sometimes using hardware, and then using hardware to encode it. So if you were running with some VC1 video, your Plex server would be able to decode it in hardware and then encode it in H.264 so you could have a full hardware transcoding. But importantly here is that it also supported the decoding of HEVC video, but you'll note that it can't encode it. It also didn't support 10-bit video. And most importantly, the hardware on this chip doesn't support hardware-based HDR to SDR tone mapping. And as more and more of my library has HDR content, my server was having a hard time delivering that content to devices when tone mapping had to take place. Now, of course, Plex has a whole support page on hardware tone mapping. And if we look at the system requirements here, in my case, I'm running with Docker, you can see that it requires a KB Lake or newer processor. So if we go back to our Intel QuickSync thing here, you can see that right now we're on Braswell with this PR2100 over here, and KB Lake is all the way over here. So we need a more up-to-date processor in order to be able to do all of the hardware transcoding that I want to do. So earlier this year, after many years of dutiful service, I retired the PR2100 and I moved over to an Intel N150 based network attached storage device, that B-Link server that we looked at a few weeks ago. And that one has been running great now because it has a more up-to-date processor. So let's dive into what it is running with. Now this Intel N150 processor that we're looking at here is part of the Twin Lake family. And this is actually a revision of the N100 processor that's based on Alder Lake. And if we jump back to our QuickSync table here, you can see that Alder Lake is pretty modern here. And it supports a lot of things that some of these Braswell chips that we were running with did not. Although you'll see some formats dropping off. So for example, uh, VP8 is no longer supported for decode or encode at all. But a lot of the other popular formats are supported and of course, we're able to make use of that hardware transcoding feature for tone mapping. So that uh, current server that I'm running is doing a lot better than my PR2100 was here because of the fact that its chip is more up to date and it can handle those tasks in its hardware transcoder. Now, if you have an older Intel server and have the ability to slide in a GPU, you can make use of that GPU for hardware transcoding. Plex officially supports NVIDIA GPUs and if you go over to another Wikipedia page, you can see what video modes different NVIDIA GPUs support. So for example, the GTX 1050s are probably not a bad entry point. Those GPUs are probably pretty affordable at this point. And as you can see, they support a good amount of formats out there. They don't support AV1. You've got to get a newer one for that. Uh, but I think you might be able to find a used GPU along with your used server that might be able to bridge some gaps in your transcoding capabilities. And many users are reporting success with Intel Arc GPUs. I'm seeing a lot of discussion in the community about them. They seem to work quite well. There seems to be good Linux compatibility. I haven't tested these myself yet, so I can't give you a definitive thumbs up on it, but it looks like there's been a lot of positive comments about these GPUs out there. And this is another way that you could bridge the gap if you have an older Intel-based server. Speaking of servers, how am I serving Plex now? Well, it's changed a lot over the years. When I was on the laptop, I was just running the Windows version. When I switched over to the PR2100 here, they had a Plex application that was provided by WD that installs onto this through its interface. That's essentially a Linux version of the Plex media server. And now that I'm on that B-Link server, I am running Unraid and I'm using the Docker version of Plex. And I think Docker is probably the best way to run Plex. And the reason is, is that it's very easy to back it up. First of all, you just shut your Docker container down and back up all the files that you have stored on your server. So for example, this is my server. And whenever I shut the Docker container down, I can just copy this entire metadata section here off and store it somewhere. So if I ever have a problem, I can very easily uh, get things back up and running. 
Docker is also very easy to migrate from one piece of hardware to the other. So all you have to do is move this blob of files over to your new system, point the Docker container at it, and it will boot right up like nothing ever happened. So Docker is, I think, again, the best way to get your Plex server running these days. It runs great on just regular old PC hardware, but you can also install Docker on Synology, NAS devices, QNAPs, and others as well. And that's what I would do if I were setting up a server today. And in fact, that's what I am doing uh, with my server here at the house. Now, if you wanted to play around with some cheap hardware with a very up-to-date Intel processor, I really like these cheap GMK Tech mini PCs. I bought a couple of them at this point and they run Linux great. They're under 150 bucks. You can load up a whole bunch of Docker containers, including your Plex server on them. And they do a great job with hardware transcoding, even hardware tone mapping. So if you wanted to play around, I would say start with that because it's not gonna cost you all that much money and it may end up being all the server uh, that you need for pretty much next to nothing at this point. So lots of fun stuff here. If you were looking to upgrade your server or you're shopping around, you can sometimes get a really good deal on very capable older Intel hardware, but it might be missing some of those hardware transcoding components. So do some research first, plug in a GPU if you need to, and hopefully this was a helpful look at my path and why I made upgrade decisions when I did. I want to thank Plex for their ongoing support of the channel, and I want to thank you all for watching. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman.